So many games are going to be coming out on Unreal Engine 5 and targeted at the current gen consoles only, and I'm really nervous about what the performance is going to look like. Uh, we've already seen, our, you know, the first look at Unreal Engine 5 was when Fortnite got updated to it. Now, Fortnite is developed by Epic, who makes the Unreal Engine 5 uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, engine, <laughs> so as well as the game Fortnite. And when it first came out, I looking at it at max settings, the RTX 4090 and the 7900 XTX, the most powerful AMD GPU and NVIDIA GPU at 4K resolution, if you wanted to max out all the settings, uh, in my testing was actually running around 47 FPS right here on the 7900 XTX. Now granted that is 4K resolution and the 4090 was only about 64 FPS. And while Fortnite looks pretty nice for what it is, it's not even shooting for photo realism. It's more of the stylized, I don't know, maybe you could call it a Disney Pixar look if you, uh, you know. Uh, and you know, there is a lot of good stuff going on here. And this is from Epic themselves. And this is a competitive game where you would care about performance, right? Uh, whereas uh, we've seen not a lot since then until finally we got Remnant 2 came out recently, also running on Unreal Engine 5. And this game absolutely hammers a GPU if you try to run it without upscaling. Uh, this is my testing in my previous video. It looks like I've got a tan since then. Anyway, um, <laughs> showing an RTX 4090 uh, hitting about 45 FPS at ultra settings, 4K resolution. And if you drop down to 1440p resolution, uh, which I think I tested right at the start, uh, 1440p resolution without upscaling at ultra settings, I was only averaging in kind of the 70, mid 70s FPS range. Now this is one of the more demanding areas. There's a lot of vegetation going on here and all that. But again, we're talking about a $1,600 graphics card uh, hitting kind of mid 70s uh, in this game to run at a native 1440p without upscaling. And this game, Remnant 2, actually doesn't even use all of the Unreal Engine 5 features. This just relies on Nanite. It, it doesn't even use the Lumen lighting system, which is incredibly demanding as well. And what uh, spurred me to make this video today is um, Immortals of Avium is about to hit. And this game is using Unreal Engine 5 and it's using Nanite and Lumen and some other features, and its PC system requirements look absolutely brutal. Although they do have an article talking about, they're, they're very proud of the scalability on offer, and there's actually a really cool looking um, settings menu here where you can actually get uh, some, I, I guess this actually is coming from an Unreal Engine 5 feature, uh, but they're implementing it in their own sort of way here, where you can get your system's GPU and CPU budget, and then you can look at the individual graphic settings in the game and how they're impacting the GPU and CPU budget, uh, which does look really interesting. So I, I'm I'm definitely planning on benchmarking this game when it comes out. Hopefully you guys are interested in, in, in that, as both one of the first big third-party uh, Unreal Engine 5 games, and I think the first one that's delivering on all of the feature set um, and by third party, I mean not from Epic themselves with Fortnite. So other than Fortnite, I think this is gonna be the first big full release that actually features pretty much all of the big Unreal Engine 5 uh, feature sets. And this is very interesting. And they actually said it'll scan not only the hardware you have, but the programs you're running in the background and things like that. So um, now I'm curious how well it'll actually work. And they don't give an actual frame rate target that staying within your budget um, would deliver, but they do say that you can exceed the budget but expect performance hits and staying um, well below the budget uh, would give you further frame rate. And obviously they're expecting the best balance to be at staying right up to but slightly below um, th those, uh, those performance budgets. So that's at least really interesting. And if this is coming from an Unreal Engine 5 uh, feature, I'll be interested to see if other game developers implement that in some way. And this developer is also talking about um, uh, wanting to uh, push it a little bit farther in what it can do, because they did mention scaling to other um, monitor resolutions and aspect ratios for those settings. So I'm, I'm unclear right now if it's um, 
if the CPU and GPU budget are actually take, fully taking into account the resolution that you're playing at. Now, anyway, let's get into the system requirements on a little bit of this and then look at some of the Lumen and Nanite shots that they're showing off here. And maybe talk about, does any of this seem justified? Because, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know, it's an interesting question. Um, to play this game, Immortals of Avium, at uh, 1080p, 60fps, at what appears to be saying low settings, 1080p, 60fps, they're going to require a Radeon RX 5700 XT or a GeForce RTX 2080 Super. Those are pretty high, uh, not, they're not high end currently, but they're fairly high for 1080p low 60 FPS. But not only that, guys, check this out. Um, there is this footnote, which is it includes upscaling set to quality by default to maximize frame rates. In other words, I think they're getting the 60 FPS number after upscaling at the quality setting, uh, which I believe at 1080p means you're at basically a 720p uh, internal resolution if you're using quality upscaling on FSR2 or DLSS. Now, the game does say that it does feature FSR 2.2 and um, I think the DLSS3. Uh, um, uh, I didn't see clearly whether or not include the frame generation aspect of DLSS 3, but that there's at least the upscaling aspect, question mark on frame generation. But anyway, that's a pretty heavy, heavy duty workload. Um, <laughs> if we're talking 720p upscaled to 1080p uh, at low graphic settings to hit 60 FPS at 1080p on something like a 2080 Super. Uh, for medium settings at 60 FPS, again, using quality upscaling, which actually means I think they're rendering a little bit below 1080p and then upscaling to uh, 1440p. Uh, they're talking an RX 6800 XT and a 3080 Ti. Now, this is also a little bit interesting, the 3080 Ti, because the 6800 XT generally performs closer to the 3080, not 3080 Ti. But the 3080 Ti has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the 3080, although it has a 12 gigabyte variant that wasn't very common, the main 3080 model was a 10 gigabyte model, and the 6800 XT has 16 gigabytes. And they're very specific about this VRAM capacity. So it's looking like um, 10 gigabytes is probably not enough for medium settings at 1440p resolution, even using quality upscaling. At least that is heavily implied by the system requirements list. Now, I don't want to lead, lean way too much into a system requirements list, uh, you know, because sometimes it's just the, the systems that they had on hand to test. But I do find it very interesting that they're going with the, with the 12 gigabyte card here rather than 3080 10 gigabyte, when normally that would be expected to be more similar in raw performance to the 6800 XT. Um, so anyway, that's further running into that uh, VRAM <laughs> uh, situation that we've been in a lot of recent games. Also notice that the CPUs on, on, on offer here when we're jumping up to these settings are, are fairly recent and fairly high end. Again, that could be what just happens to be in their test systems, um, but that's a, a bit rough. And again, seeing what we've seen in the recent games, um, like Remnant and even Fortnite when you're running at its maximum settings using features like Lumen and Nanite, uh, it, it, I mean, <laughs> things look like they're gonna get pretty demanding. Now at high settings at 4K resolution 60 FPS, again, with quality upscaling enabled. So, at, so 4K um, DLSS or FSR2 quality is actually rendering internally at 1440p and then upscaling the image from there, which does take some processing. Uh, they're asking for a 7900 XT and RTX 4080, which is quite a bit to ask for. And notice that they are specifying the VRAM again. Now it can't be clear that we need at least that much VRAM, but certainly something to, to wonder and to think about. Um, but again, that is a lot of graphics horsepower. Again, 4K 60 FPS at high settings. Um, and then if you do want to play at 4K ultra settings and they're pushing up to 120 FPS, they're saying the 7900 XTX and RTX 4090. Um, and they're even pushing the CPUs up because I, I'm guessing that would 
at least possibly indicate that a 5700X and a 12700K couldn't push to 120 FPS, even if your GPU could. You could you could hit CPU limits, at least at the ultra settings in the game. Again, uh, other settings in the game do affect CPU utilization. You can probably drop those down. So this is really interesting. Now, one thing I will say though is 60 FPS to 120 FPS, 7900 XT to 7900 XTX, or 4080 to 4090, that's not a doubling of GPU power. Uh, so I wonder if there's more upscaling going on than what they're indicating here. Like that does seem a bit odd in the system requirement list, but I didn't want this to just be about this particular game, more talking about um, Unreal Engine 5 and its performance demands. This looks like the type of uh, uh, system requirements that we might start to see for these big AAA uh, current gen console only Unreal Engine 5 games. Now there is some interesting sh uh, showing off what exactly is Unreal Engine 5 doing that's so demanding, like seeing Nanite and Lumen, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But speaking on the system requirements, I do want to mention one more thing, uh, though, which is that they do mention trying to get it run on lower end hardware and that they might come out with a system requirements list for this particular game, um, trying to go to 1080p 30 FPS. Uh, they are saying that right now they have the game, what they're calling running well in the 40 frames per second range on a GTX 1070 and a Core i7-8700K. Now that's not super low end. I mean, a lot of people still have that. That is definitely aging, but it's looking like they're having trouble hitting 60 FPS, but you know, playable in the 40 FPS range, but they're not talking about what settings, I'd imagine low settings and what upscaling they're having to hit there. Like, are they having to go into like performance mode on upscaling? Cause performance mode at 1080p, uh, upscaling is, is that a 360p internal resolution? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's half res. So that'd be like a uh, 540p, I think internal res. Um, Anyway, that's <laughs> uh, that's just a guess on what they might be doing there. So that is pretty interesting to see. Now, what is what is it? So I mean, <laughs> what is Unreal Engine Five doing? So one big thing is the Lumen lighting system, and they do give some on-off comparisons here. This is a, a scene in Immortals of Avium with Lumen on, and I will link um, this this sort. And here's Lumen off. So the Lumen lighting system gets you a lot, there's Lumen back on again, a lot of the actual, you know, global illumination, the bounce lighting going on uh, without the developers having to bake it in. If you look at uh, what they say, in, this is an interesting read if you guys wanna take a full look at this article, which again, I will link in the video description. Um, they talk about how this helps the development process. So I, I think a lot of this is helping the developers reach this look quickly but again, I'm curious on the performance impact that's having to get there. Um, because they're saying in Unreal Engine 4, they would have to balance dynamic lights with some baked lighting for an area, which is a process that would take hours, hours for the developer to complete. Whereas Lumen lets them just set things where they want, turn it on, and it just kind of happens in basically real time, uh, which I'm sure is a big benefit to development resources. But again, it looks like we are maybe hitting a lot of um, demand on how we get there on the actual gaming PC hardware. Uh, also, if you're curious on what's going on with Nanite, the, the idea with Nanite is that you can have really high quality meshes uh, for, for, for a lot of detail in the, um, you know, I think I have a, a look at this here. Uh, so the idea here is, you know, in a traditional baked asset, let me get myself ah, tiny out of the way. In a you could have traditional baked assets, right? Uh, where you have a certain amount of triangles, certain amount of polygons of density, and then you can have an extremely high polygon nanite asset, which then as, um, as you get further away, it shows less of the triangles, right? It kind of just intelligently pops in more or less detail uh, as you go uh, to give you a, basically, uh, the idea I think is to give you as much detail on your screen as your pixel density of what you're rendering can actually handle at that time. Whereas with traditional baked assets, you just get a certain number of polygons and they might have to do uh, more manually different levels of detail that kind of pop in a little bit less naturally. Uh, I think they have a one here trying to show off what's going on. Uh, when you're kind of zooming in using a uh, nanite assets. So uh, actually let's do one here where it shows it, I think side by side. Um, so they're showing here what it looks like in game. And then on the right hand side, showing you the actual like 
polygons, and as you get closer in, more polygons kind of come into view, load in, all of that. So this is some of the tech behind this, and the idea is to get a very next-gen looking game, and to do it with less developer resources, not having to think so much about, uh, you know, getting the different levels of detail, and also having them load in very smoothly without as much pop-in, which is nice. And again, the Lumen lighting system, um, getting you that, that nice bounce lighting and a lot less work of having to bake it in without the downsides of baked lighting where it's less dynamic. Um, so it's certainly interesting. But again, I'm curious what you guys think about uh, the overall performance hits where you need to upscale at 1080p, you know, render lower than 1080p with upscaling to hit, uh, you know, a 1080p 60fps target on something like a 2080 Super. That's, um, I don't know, something to think about. <laughs> but this, I mean, certainly is where a lot of games are headed. Uh, we're gonna see more and more Unreal Engine 5 games, and then there's gonna be other game engines as well. Not everybody's switching to Unreal Engine 5, but a lot of major studios certainly seem to be doing this. So yeah, Immortals of Avium coming out August 22nd. I'm definitely gonna take a look at testing the performance on that. Uh, hopefully you guys are interested in seeing it. And I'm also, like I said, I'm pretty interested in this. This, uh, um, uh, you know, showing the CPU versus GPU uh, resources involved on each of those uh, different graphic settings uh, as, as you go through them and, and kind of showing that dynamically in real time. Also interested in how well that actually works. Anyway, I'm curious what you guys think about Unreal Engine 5. Are you excited for the games and what we'll see? Are you just nervous about the performance hit? Is it a little bit of both? Also, there's the elephant in the room of Unreal Engine's stuttering issues and CPU utilization issues. It's looking like Unreal Engine 5 is doing things to improve on that over Unreal Engine 4, but is it enough? So that'll be another thing we'll need to take a look at um, as we see more and more Unreal Engine 5 games. I think I'm gonna leave this video here. This was just a lot of thoughts, both about Immortals of Avium system requirements and just what we're seeing from Unreal Engine 5 in general. More and more games certainly hitting it, and I, I don't know, interested in what you guys think. Uh, I hope all of you have an excellent day.